Hi students, in this video, we are going to guide you about different formulas and equation which you can use in unit number one of CMA part one. These equations or formulas can help you to solve the various questions. Another practice you can do whenever you are planning to do the practice questions, you can just have a look on these formulas before starting the practice questions. It can be very helpful for you. So this is not a lecture for unit number one of CMA part one. Uh, we are just guiding you about the different formulas. Topic wise, we will guide you which are the formulas we have to use in each topic. The first topic, the first important topic which we have in unit number one, balance sheet. We know the definition of balance sheet. Another advanced name we have statement of financial position. It's one of the financial statement which is giving us the information, how much resources we have and how these resources we are going to finance. So simple accounting equation we have to use here in balance sheet, we have to keep in mind this simple accounting equation. Assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. So this equation giving us the information, how much resources we have and how these resources we are financing either through liabilities or equity. So apart from that, we don't have any major formula in balance sheet. Another terminology we see here in when we define the current assets. So when you will read the definition for current assets, you will find this terminology. We call it as operating cycle. How we define it? total time required to convert your purchases or inventory into cash again. So for this one, you have to keep in mind the formula days in inventory plus days in accounts receivables So spelling you can say inventory days in inventory plus days in accounts receivable. Like how many days over stock remain in the warehouse and further how many days over customer took to make the payment. So the sum of these two days we have operating cycle. This formula also you have to keep in mind. Another one starts, uh, the next topic in the first unit we have about income statement. Um, although we, you can have the detailed format to prepare the income statement like you will get the sales. From the sales you will subtract cost of goods sold Further, you will have gross margin. And from this one, you subtract your admin expenses. You subtract your selling expenses and you get the operating income. We don't go to the format of income statement for the time being, just giving you the idea. We have detailed format in the book as well. Here we can look for this simple equation, like if you want to calculate the operating income quickly without drawing this statemental form, you can use this um, equation. Operating income is equal to sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost. This is the situation when your data you have in terms of variable cost and fixed cost form. Another one in order to calculate simple income revenues plus gain minus expenses minus all kind of losses. Uh, in case we have any loss on the disposal of fixed asset. So once you subtract uh, the expenses and losses from the gains and revenues, you will have the income. This simple equation you can use to calculate the income. Another most famous equation we use many times this equation, let me write as well, sales equal to cost plus gross profit. Sales equal to cost plus gross profit. So this equation you can use alternatively. Like if you have to calculate the gross profit, you will arrange it with this format, sales minus cost. If you have to calculate, say cost, if you want to calculate the cost, it will be equal to cost is equal to sales minus gross profit, meaning gross profit going to other side, subtracting from the sales to have the cost, correct? So this formula we have for the calculation of cost. 
one thing if, if you need this sheet you can comment in the uh, comment box you can give me your email id i can provide you this formula sheet which can which can be very helpful for your exam point of view another formula we have in this unit how to calculate the gross margin percentage because sometime we need the gross margin percentage when we are looking to calculate the either sales figure or we are looking to calculate the cost if we have the gross margin percentage we can easily calculate the gross margin amount because gross margin percentage mean you will apply this percentage say the gross margin is 10 percent in order to calculate the amount of gross margin you will apply this percentage on the sales value you will get the amount of gross margin so like that gross margin percentage can be very helpful for us so here how to calculate gross margin percentage it's equal to gross profit and dividing by gross sales so it's the word gross margin uh, profit margin these words we are using alternatively another formula we can use here to calculate the cost of goods sold in income statement students you know that the major calculation we have in income statement related to cost of goods sold so here two kind of cost of goods sold usually you deal one for the trading companies what are the trading companies which buys the item and sell it without any kind of modification we call it as trading companies so this simple equation opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock is equal to cost of sales you will use to calculate the cost of sales in case of trading companies one important point you have to keep in mind here the purchases which you will use in the calculation for cost of goods sold here you have to consider the total purchase cost total purchase cost consists of the cost which you pay to supplier plus any directly attributable cost to the purchases say you paid the custom duty air freight any direct cost related to the purchase it will be the part of our purchase cost like usually when you will solve the question he will give you the figure freight in so this freight in you have to add in the purchases in order to calculate the cost of sales so students, this equation you will use to calculate the cost of sales for the trading company another formula we have to calculate the cost of sales for the manufacturing company so in manufacturing company what we are doing we are buying the raw material and we are performing some sort of magic on this one we apply on this raw material we apply direct labor manufacturing overhead and we convert this raw material into finished goods so this operation actually i am doing in a manufacturing company so this detail equation you have to use in order to calculate the cost of sale for the manufacturing firm you get the opening stock of raw material you add the purchases similar like before you add all kind of direct cost of purchases here in the amount of purchase you subtract the closing stock of raw material and like that you get the direct material use in production further in this one you add the direct labor you add the manufacturing overhead you get the total manufacturing cost and further in total manufacturing cost you adjust work in process beginning and closing you get the cost of goods manufactured in cost of goods manufactured you adjust finished goods opening and closing you get the cost of goods sold so it's, as i told you i'm just explaining the formulas in this in, in video so for that detailed explanation of cost of goods sold you can have a look on other videos further students in unit number one itself we have the uh, topic related to statement of cash flows so here also uh, we are not going to explain you how we prepare the statement of cash flows just we can show you the format like we start from the net income we make various kind of adjustment in this one 
related to the depreciation, non-cash expenses, um, also working capital adjustments, and we get the cash flow from operating activities. Further, we have cash flow from investing activities, certain kind of transactions we add in cash flow from investing activities. You can have a look on the list and also you can have a look on the list cash flow from financing activities. So like that, you will have the statement of cash flows. Another equation, a kind of statement, we have a topic in unit number one, we call it as statement of changes in equity. In statement of changes in equity, you are just giving the reconciliation about each element of equity. So we don't have any major formulas, but you can see in the book one, in a statement we have, we call it as statement of retain earning. The main purpose to keep in mind this statement of retain earning, we want to have the information. What are the major elements bringing the change in the opening balance of retain earning? Say the opening balance of retain earning, we further add the income or loss for the period. We subtract the dividend distributed during the period and we add or subtract prior period positive or negative adjustments. So like that, we have the retained earning ending balance. So the main purpose to prepare the statement of retained earning, we want to have the information, what are the elements bringing the change in the opening balance of retained earning. All right, students, I hope that this video will be helpful for you. Uh, I will upload the next video soon about the second unit formula list and like that we'll try to add the videos for all the units formula list um, in order to get this one uh, you have to do one simple thing just comment uh, your email id i can share with you uh, through your email id thank you very much